Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. Uh, I upgraded my filtration in a pretty major way, but first let's take a close look at all the fish. Gotta start with a nature documentary. Everyone's been doing amazing together, so. Here is Ro, my diamond sturgeon. I love the side shots where you can see their mouth and the barbels underneath when they come right up to eat. Then behind him here is a long ear sunfish on the left there. And that is caviar in the background. He actually must have hit his head on one of the cinder blocks. He's got a little white mark, but that'll heal in a day or two. Must have just done it last night. But yes, caviar and roe. The two diamond or Russian sturgeon they're called too. Definitely the highlights of the pit. Then here comes Melanie actually, uh, coming out to get some pellets. The eels have started getting more comfortable coming out for pellets. They really love any kind of frozen fish or shrimp. And everyone's always asking what happens when the, uh, won't the crabs eat the eels? Not at all. Uh, they have 300 square feet to move around. So if one does pinch one, they just separate, dart apart. Totally fine. That was Rangoon trying to nip at Melanie there. And this here is Minnelly Eel over there sniffing around. It is cool seeing just the distance where you can see them kind of behaving naturally off in the distance and they'll come up and interact with me. Yeah, I actually did have a cup full of smelt ready to go to feed the eels too, so grab his attention. All the sturgeon <laughs> vacuum back and forth on their pellets. Yeah, the eels have gotten... They're, it's weird, they pretty much only come out when they're hungry or when they smell food in the water. See the crab with the uh, couple smelt there too. And here's Melanie again to get hers. It is fun when they come right up like that. See, Rangoon swatted her. She took off swimming. This here's pretty exciting too. It's so dark. The gar always hang out in the back corner just because there's a little more cover for them. Um, I'll definitely be adding more cover soon, but Jason, the wild caught spotted gar, has started eating frozen smelt, so that makes them much easier. The spotted gar were only eating live shiners. So going forward, I think I'll be able to get them much tamer and coming out in the light to eat out of my hands, hopefully. And then this here's just a long shot of the sturgeon. Caviar and row. It's so cool. They do really love to be close to each other, which is interesting. Uh, I really had no idea before I started owning them, but sturgeon are actually pretty social with each other. Um, and they can actually make uh, like vibrations with their gills and kind of speak to each other even. Yeah, I just really love how how natural this scene right here looks. I mean, it's driftwood rocks and sturgeon calmly sifting through it looking for food. That doesn't get much better than that. But anyway, on with the main topic of this video. So yes, I did have a buddy come over and drill two holes through my garage floor. This is actually the most real change I've done to my house for the eel pit is drilled through my garage floor with a two inch bit so I've got two little bulkheads basically um, through the floor and this is so I can plumb the eel pit mini the uh, IBC toad I have big white tub uh, down into the eel pit and actually run filtration in there instead of the little 20 gallon aquarium with the canister filter down in the pit but yeah so when he did punch through the concrete, I was underneath with a bucket ready to catch all that concrete dust. It would have raised my pH some, but it's so much water volume, I wasn't too worried about it. But better to not have all that dust go into the tank. It was pretty dusty. But yeah, nothing too major. And now I have two little peepholes to watch the sturgeon from the surface. This is caviar. You can see he's actually spitting water. It's weird how often they do kind of skim the surface. Uh, around the edges like this. Searching for food, I think, but it seems like everyone that keeps sturgeon has really cool videos of them just jumping at the sides like that. But yeah, here are the little two inch diameter holes. And I will be running hose up and down uh, to attach the eel pit mini as my filtration instead of that 20 gallon aquarium that I had down there. While we're here, here is a update on all the fish in the eel pit mini. So yeah, we have the Indian Gold Mashir, 
the Tibetan mountain loaches, and uh, the three perch barbs. I've got a video specifically on when I got all these guys. Uh, the Chinese perch is still inside in one of my aquariums. He'll probably be going with my Australian lungfish in maybe next week. But yeah, you can see the... They really just look like minnows. <laughs> but uh, they will be much, much cooler than a minnow when they get some size to them. So that was the albino loach. And then here's what the wild coloration looks like. I can't wait for these guys to grow. They do eat amazing. They are really impressive looking animals. Especially, I mean, if they have the potential to get 30 inches... That will be absolutely insane down there with the gar and sturgeon. They're really good feeders. They come flying out for some food. Then here we have Ro coming up to uh, try some smelt. They recognize me as food definitely by now. And he did end up taking it out of my hands, but he didn't swallow it. Just chewed on it for a while. They're such cool animals. Alright, but then to punch holes in the IBC tote and run some hose. But yeah, for now it'll just waterfall down. Um, I'll eventually kind of probably clean that side up, make a proper waterfall or do something with that waterfalling. I'd like to put filter socks there just to catch all the sediment out of the water. That'd really up my clarity even more than it already is. The smelt make a little oil slick on the surface. So I really want to increase aeration too, especially as we go into the summer. Uh, that's probably the most important thing with sturgeon is they really need high aeration. So, but it'll be really nice to have um, access to the water on the surface, um, just cause I could do anything up here now. Uh, I can run all my equipment pretty much off this. Uh, I could change it up and make an aquaponic system coming out of the right here. You can see it's 67 degrees right now. I bet this will heat the eel pit up too some. Just now that it has surface temperatures. But yeah, over here I could do a big aquaponics rack. Um, I could plumb another IBC toad into it. Now kind of the possibilities are endless. So I definitely needed to drill those holes just so I could have easy access to the water up here. So in the long run it'll be super, super nice to have all the filtration up top. And then I can just make this a little more natural looking. I do definitely plan on getting more rocks and wood. Uh, but now I don't need this 20 gallon. So I'm going to throw all this media into that 15 gallon on the surface. Uh, this is one of the crabs I just had in here. I was waiting for him to molt and grow his arm back before I let him out. But he's been in here since I got the crabs a few months ago. And he hasn't molted yet. So we'll just throw him back in the pit. He can defend himself fine. Like I said, if it can't fit in any of the fish's mouths, there's no real risk of anyone being eaten. But yeah, here is the currently completed uh, hoses. I'll definitely do something different here. Some type of waterfall or something. I'd like to grow a moss on the back wall too. But yeah, for now, just spilling down, making bubbles, making aeration. But yeah, I'd like to do filter socks. Clean this pit up some. And then here is Jason actually eating another smelt. So super excited to see them eat. When they were eating live shiners, they weren't associating me with food. Uh, so then I directly feed them frozen. They'll get more and more comfortable and hopefully be more and more active down here when I'm down here and filming. And then I can slowly get them accustomed to me hand feeding them. This here is Crunchwrap Supreme. He's the largest eel I have. Uh, and he's probably the longest fish down here, uh, bigger than any of the gar bigger than the sturgeon. Then here, this is how I've kind of been getting the Gar's attention. Uh, this is Garth Brooks over here, and then that's Jason on the left. But you can see he takes a swipe and snags that one. I think Garth Brooks will get eating out of my hand the first. But I'd love to have all the spotteds eating frozen. Gardos and Garchomp, but they're going to be slow about it. Who's not slow about it is the gar inside. Uh, so this is my 500 gallon aquarium. That is garlic on the left, my platinum alligator gar. You can see he actually broke his back a few months ago, but he's getting around fine. I don't think it'll heal any more than it is. Um, he'll always have that crook in his back. But yeah, he is an aggressive feeder. He's always done well. Then that is Garfield on the right. Um, and I think his snout is actually growing downwards, um, which would be more of an inbreeding thing than anything. 
Uh, this tank's eight foot by four foot, so it should be plenty big as a grow out. Uh, but in another two months, they'll be out in the pit, both of them, once it uh, warms up to summer temperatures down there. Man, garlic is beautiful. I'm excited to have him in the pit. He gets that amazing iridescent shine on his scales in the light. Such cool fish, both of them. Then I also have some polypterus down here. Uh, two ornates, two in lacari. Oh, and a short body in lacari also. But yeah, garlic is amazing. You can really see that light shimmer off him here. So, I'm glad the him breaking his back wasn't too bad. I really love uh, Garfield, the pattern of his tail too, where it's white and gold. Kind of unique for the marbled uh, alligator gar like that. But yeah, that is my update on the eel pit. Everything's doing well, and it should get more and more impressive as uh, I add things to my filtration. Thanks for watching.